Hello. Cool, okay, let's do this. My name's Ben Bates. I'm a father, husband, entrepreneur, and human of travel. And I've been that guy in New York that you've avoided making eye contact with, because in the recent weeks, I've strived to get as much information from as many travelers in New York about what's important to them when they travel the world. Now, Humans of Travel is about recognizing and celebrating the differences between travelers when they look at experiencing the world. It's also about understanding that they, these travelers give us signals to professional experience makers, the people in this room, about what's important to them when they travel. So I have five minutes with you. I would like to inform you, by, inform you with data and drive us with empathy by introducing 11 and a half humans of travel that recognize the needs and wants of the many. I will then pose six questions to you and identify six travel themes. You see, we talk about travel being uh, humanized, but actually I think travel is anonymous. We, um, we ultimately focus on being able to look at the many, but in, in, we, what we should do is focus on the individual and be recognized about what's, it, what's important to every single traveler. So I had the opportunity to speak to 11 and a half people from different, uh, different backgrounds, cultures, experience, travel goals, and travel preferences. And I'm going to ask you the questions. How do you advertise value? Are you shareworthy? How do you market affordability? And are you enforcing policy fatigue? And we also met an interesting small family from Uruguay and two friends from Iowa who said, how do you appeal to multiple audiences? And are, are you shareworthy or are you big on small screens to be able to enhance your business overall? So first, I'd like to introduce you to Elise and Jessica from Iowa. They were visiting New York for five days. And what's really important to them is that they can make quick decisions and uh, be spontaneous on mobile. So my question to the audience today is, are you big on small screens? This is really important, because if you're not, you need to ensure that mobile links, especially when uh, you want to en enhance those that are traveling on mobile, are touch end, meaning that if they're links, it will take four seconds every time somebody wants to enhance and make a decision through the shopping experience. And also, 60% of smartphone usage occurs at home. Manuela and Joanne and their small baby boy were visiting from Uruguay for five days in New York. And what's really important to them right now in their life is that as many experiences in the world are child-friendly. So my question to you is how do you appeal to multiple audiences? See, 30% of consumers with children feel that prices per night and additional extras are not clear online. And this is super important because these, this demographic and these types of travelers actually spend twice the amount of time before they make an experience or accommodation decision. See, Nicole from Sydney in Australia, she's looking for flexibility, she's looking for free cancellations, and she's looking for simplicity. So what we're seeing more and more in the travel industry is what's called policy fatigue, where we give them as many policies to tie them into a rate. So the way we can avoid this is 95% of guests comment that confusing or elaborate policies reduce the chance of booking online. So you might want to consider more flexible rates, more flexible conditions for specific travelers booking from a specific demographic on a specific length of stay or a specific book window. See, Elizabeth is searching for affordability. She wants it all inclusive, whether it's dinner, breakfast, or lunch. And this is my question to the audience today is, how do you market the affordability of your product, service, feature, or hotel? So specifically, what Elizabeth is looking for and what, what's referenced in research is 40% of consumers preference properties when they have a meal-inclusive option, so that's dinner, lunch, or breakfast. And 60% of single solo travelers mentioned that a single rate is not common, but when it is, it does increase the chance of affordability. Sadra and Rosemary from Goa in India, these are the pioneers, or what we would see as Instagram-obsessed. They want to ensure that they can share their experience wherever they go with as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. So are you shareworthy? 50% of global travelers do not book accommodation or an experience until they've read reviews of a similar peer group. And 66% post at least once while they're staying. So what's your hashtag, and how can you make your customers brand advocates? And finally, Patrick, Sam, and Jeff from Boston, Massachusetts were taking a long weekend trip to New York, which is very common. When you're doing a spontaneous trip, you're looking for value for money. And my question to the audience today is, how do you advertise values to those spontaneous travelers? So specifically, when we look at this, 67% of travelers see more value in clear images than room descriptions or guest reviews. And what you can do on booking.com or even on your own website is prioritize photos based on the most recommended or highlighted things in guest reviews to appeal to those customers. And that's it. In just five minutes, I've introduced you to 11 and a half humans of travel, six questions to you across six travel themes that recognize how you can appeal to the anonymous traveler. And that's what it's all about. Ultimately, it's humans helping humans experience the world. And that's, that's me. Enjoy MTS. Thanks for your time. And keep being human.